Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Hello everyone, welcome back to our exclusive coverage of, in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound. This is the industry conference from people from around the world, from Silicon Valley, New York, and around the globe, coming to Puerto Rico talk about blockchain, decentralized internet, cryptocurrency, and really the future of society and global economic value creation. Of course, our continuing coverage is focusing on us here for 2018. Our next guest is Mark Jeffrey, CEO and co-founder of a company called Guardian Circle. Welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. So you guys are doing something really interesting. So we, first of all, we like to geek out, as Fred say, we're alpha geeks, but we love IoT, cloud computing, you're doing something really interesting right now with blockchain and this new decentralized internet around something of a critical infrastructure nature. Take a minute to talk about Guardian Circle's product, the coin, token that you're doing, okay. and what it all means. So, uh, Guardian is the token. Uh, the company's called Guardian Circle. Together they comprise global decentralized emergency response. So, uh, six billion people on Earth have no 911. There's just there's no magic number you can call, right? So hold that in your mind for a second. The other one billion of us, we do have 911, um, but it's not very good. It hasn't been really updated since the 60s. If you call 911, if you're lucky enough to not get a busy signal, um, they have no idea where you are. Your location information is not transmitted, which Uber can find you more easily than 911, it's in, which is just insane. But that is the way it is. So. Never mind, so, so nine throw all that broke. out. Nine yep. is broken. If you have it, it's broken, and most people don't have it. So throw the whole thing out the window. Let's start over. What would we, be, what would we build today? The way the world should work is whenever you're in trouble, no matter where you are on the, on the globe, all you should have to do is press a button. That button sends an alert up to the cloud. The cloud looks down and sees what people and resources are already nearby. Yeah. It then activates, coordinates, pushes all that help to you as quickly as possible. So, 10 people in three minutes. That's what we're, So there's a couple things going on. So to me, when yep. you say, what should we start from scratch, putting my little operating system design, network solutions hat on, all kind of rolled into one is, a stable, fault tolerant, resilient, robust, always on network. Yes. Uh, database that is fully interoperable and updated in real time. Yes. Of every number, every location, every person's capability to understand the discovery and resolution of a number. Yeah. So that sounds I, so like the internet. That's, uh, that sounds like the internet. <laughs> well, you know? that's a little bit probably further than we're going right now, but yes. But the, you, but the idea the, would you, be... Ultimately, you're correct. That would be so the So no ultimate. legacy baggage, 1960s no. telco. We're talking about in mobile, in Africa, for instance, there's more mobile penetration than anything else. That's yes. what they got. So every country has their own sovereign kind of architecture. Yes. You, are you guys looking at it from a global perspective or regional? Global. What? So we think that, I mean, this is, uh, it, this thing should be mobile native location aware, and the alert should go out to multiple parties. And the phone number is your identifier in this system, but it's effectively an IP-based system, yeah. really. So you're right. Um, we have to balance that against privacy, so you get to decide who is on your alert grid, right? So you have to emphatically say, yes, my friends, family, and neighbors, yeah. and these subscription services, and if available, these official services. So blockchain can solve the immutability privacy issue. Yes. The decentralized nature of network effect yeah. is a dynamic that people look for in good deals or good architecture. That's in place. Yes. People have a social graph, interest yeah. graphs, connections. So the analog world's going digital. I mean, the old days was, is there a doctor in the house? But you were limited <laughs> by the, how far you can yell. Right. So here you're saying, literally, if you connect properly, the user's in charge of their, their data. Yeah. They can dictate what they want to connect to, or is that kind of how it works? Is it peer-to-peer? -peer? Yeah, it's it's sort of peer-to-peer. -peer. I mean, a lot of people think, what I, uh, a lot of people mishear me a little bit and think that uh, when you press that button, the alert goes out to everybody that's nearby, right? So total strangers that may or may not be trustworthy are suddenly coming. That's not what I'm saying. That is not what we're doing because uh, we don't want to accidentally summon Jack the Ripper. Like that's, you don't want to make a bad yeah. situation worse, right? Yeah. So um, you explicitly invite people into your protection grid, we call them guardians, hence yeah. guardian circle, that would be your guardian circle. Yeah. And we, you can have an unlimited number of them. So six, 6,000, you know, however many friends you have. Um, then we will also feature uh, paid, sub, paid subscription services 
where you'll be able to subscribe to like your local EMT collective uh, or your local licensed and bonded armed security. Uh, or if you're in, a, if you're in a, a remote corner of the world, you could subscribe to the guy with the truck who can run you down the mountain, right, when, you have, when you're having medical problems. So it's going to vary depending on where you are in the world, right? Uh, we're also working with the Women's Safety X Prize. We're a partner, or we're the back end of that prize, which is an IoT device contest yeah, to yeah. make a panic button device, right? So when you push the panic button, what happens? Goes into Guardian Circle. So how does the uh, token economics fit into this? So I'm getting yeah. why it's tokenizable. Yeah. How does it work mechanically? Do I buy tokens for safety? Is yeah. it like, I mean, take us through some of the so use there, cases. Yeah, sure. So there's five different ways in which we use the token. Um, uh, the first one is obviously to create the, to buy emergency response subscriptions. Now we're going to allow you or provide a way for you to, as a consumer, just uh, swipe your credit card in the app and in the background you'll be purchasing Guardium tokens, right? And it'll re-up every month if you don't have enough in. It'll be that sort of thing. So you might not even really be conscious of the fact that you're using cryptocurrency. Um, if you are, there's a wallet that will allow you to just you know, use, use the cryptocurrency manually the way you do any, any right now, right? And so there's that. Okay, so continue. Yep. The second thing we're going to do, we think that giving will be a big behavior in our universe. So you're going to be able to send Guardium directly to a beneficiary in the developing world. And what's cool about that is it doesn't go through a government, uh, a bank, or an organization. So remember Red Cross in Haiti? Can't happen here. And we're going to go even further than that. Down the road, you're going to be able to track every yeah. dollar that you donated as easily as a FedEx package. Right? So you are creating a direct relationship yes. between people who might want to help people and then a direct access for resources for the user. Correct. And so that's the that's exactly primary, it. kind of a two, that's two, two major primary. flywheels going just on. Like, just like people sponsor a child. Safety is one of the biggest problems in the world. Yeah. In fact, that some people say, it's a guy named Bre um, Greg Hahn, who says it's the number one problem in the world that all other uh, problems flow from the fact that people in the developing world aren't safe. Why don't they have water? Because they're not safe. Why don't they have education? Because they're not safe. Lawlessness has to be solved first. Trust is a huge part of this too. Yeah. So how do I set this up? Where are you guys in the system? Is there a product up and running? How yeah, do people so get involved with your project? Take we, a minute to, to share that. Sure, so we have apps released today, and they're uh, distributed worldwide on iOS, Android, and Alexa. Uh, we also have an open API that lets anyone plug any alert device into our grid. Obviously we have to, you know, we, yeah. don't, we want to know who you are first, but, yeah. but basically everyone's welcome. Um, and, uh, and so, and then the, we're, our token sales site is at guardium, guardium.co. Yeah. G, guard, I U M, guardium. Yes. Guardium. And then guardium, guardian, circle. Correct. Guardium with the M at the yes. end of the token. What's the plans? What do you guys, how much have you raised? What's the story? Yeah. So we're, we're selling $10 million worth of tokens, uh, which represents 30% overall, or 33% overall. Um, we have 100 million tokens in the, that, that's it, will ever be uh, distributed. Uh, it's on the NEO blockchain. So we are, we are we are sort of different from a lot of other folks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're one of the very first Western, we're not the first. We're NEO one has a good reputation of high performance. Yes, we are Is that one been, of the considerations you have yeah, for them? without a doubt. I mean, we deal in emergencies, so our, you know, our tolerance for things like CryptoKitties swamping the network is very low. <laughs> so, so yeah, so we, we, we liked what Neo had to say in a lot of ways because of that. So. I interviewed the CryptoKitties at Polycon. Interesting story. Uh, it's a Pokemon moment for the, uh, for, the, for the internets there. Well, congratulations, Mark. What's next for you guys? We'll get through the, the sale. How's the team makeup look? What's going on with the company? Yeah, get through, I mean, definitely get through the sale is the biggest thing right now. Um, we're a small team of like about five people plus some contractors. Uh, the next big thing that we have on our agenda is uh, we're going out to India in four weeks uh, to actually test the XPRIZE IoT panic button devices on the streets of Mumbai. So it's going to be, you know, so Guardian Circle plus device. A dense environment, a lot of people there. Yeah. So let's talk about you. What is your um, background and that got you here? Is there wasn't an itch you were scratching? Why this time? Obviously the wave attracts a lot of alpha entrepreneurs. This is a oh. disruptive time, but why Mark? Jeffries, why now, why Guardian Circle? What, what, what's, what's, the, what's the passion behind it? So, um, well, I, I started life as an engineer, and I won't bore you with all my adventures up until this moment, but uh, in 2013, I became very interested in Bitcoin, wrote a book called Bitcoin Explained Simply, got the bug, had the little crazy thoughts yeah, in my head. You're an author, speaker, right, same distinguished thing. Uh, influencer. So, so, that was, <laughs> so that's sort of how that yeah. side began. In 2014, 
um, I, I basically my girlfriend at the time had a stroke. She's fine. It's but at the okay. time she was all alone, um, and she was on the floor of her garage. And I took her to the hospital, brought her back, and afterwards I realized uh, she was alone for about half an hour. If this had been a real stroke, that this could have been very serious. She could have yeah. died. She could have been paralyzed. And she was drowning in help. There were about seven people who were either driving by or nearby while this was going on, within a thousand yards. Yeah. And she had no way to get to them. Yeah, yeah. And, and, a but personal also, example of what yeah. you're doing. And I also realized the other component was we, all the help, I didn't know six, you know, there's five of the other uh, six people. I just, they're her friends, they're not mine. But during her emergency, all of us need to be sharing location and in communication with each other immediately. And the, uh, the importance of that just cannot be overstated in emergencies. Seconds count. Yeah. And so um, putting us in instant communication so that we can coordinate a response was, is the second half of the problem. I, in, I initially did not intend to build an app. I went looking for this app. And what I discovered was there were a ton of, of panic button apps, but all of them neglected solving the second half of the problem, which is organizing the response yeah. and re getting people on in the same mobilizing resources. Yeah, getting everyone into a war room without requiring them to know each other ahead of time. That was the big thing. Yeah. No one had thought of that. So it's like was, it's like it's like rolling up services when you need it instantly. It's like a, a compiler, yeah, it's ad hoc services. You know, compile everything yes, on exactly. runtime assembly, real time you know? assembly. Yeah, it's exactly. Operating system. Great, that's actually a really good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> No, but this is also pretty important. So it's a great personal example. Thanks for sharing that personal story. But you know, there was a, um, you know avalanches in, where there is skier. It's people who go rock climbing. There's all kinds of use cases where you know a mountain biker is missing. All kinds of yeah, remote here, locations are really. I'm big scuba one. diving. Where you know where are where are people? Where are they? Where they last? So a lot of these things are are location based, and no one knows what the situation is. Yeah. So the alerting is only one step to the value chain. It is. But I think, sorry, you have a question. No, no, I was going to ask you, you so know, it is. where does it go from there? Well, I think, uh, I think there are a lot of, I think, safety check-ins. I think there's other things that we can do. But uh, the one thing that, the one lesson that I've seen again and again and again and again is that the companies that fail invariably, uh, are the companies that don't focus always fail. Yeah. So you got to pick one thing and be the best in the world at that yeah. one thing. And the emergency situation is our one thing. And, and that's big enough. Well, I think you got a great opportunity, and you know we'll squint through the uh, you know as the evolution of this market grows. It's kind of a moving train, but the value proposition is, is legit. I was talking to Fred uh, Kruger, your yes. your friend uh, and colleague in the in the business. It's a marketplace these days, so it's move money and marketplaces. In ca your case, it's safety marketplace. I could envision a day with your services where I publish and subscribe to services that in a catalog. Yes. Hey, I know my risks. Everyone knows what they do in vanity or risk factors, whether you're jumping out of an airplane or double black diamond skier. I would love to go to Lake Tahoe or a mountain or a place like this and saying, I'm going to take some chances. Here's what I'm going to subscribe to. <laughs> you're going to have to subscribe to some extra I would services use the, while you're yeah, there. I would use sure. Guardium. Like, it yep. could be a market. I'm just brainstorming, thinking out loud, but I mean, yeah, that's the kind idea. of web services framework you could bring that's exactly right. Is that the way you guys are thinking about it? I do, I do. I'm so I'm so focused on the sort of food and shelter stage of our life. Yeah, right get now an ICO that, done. That, yeah, we got we've got tons of uh, all those ideas written down, but we're not just we're not quite there yet. But when we get there, yeah. great ideas. Absolutely. Well, love the them. use cases are changing because people's expectations are changing, and now technology yeah. can meet these cases. So you know, I'm seeing a lot of social entrepreneurship being done um, yes. that are coming in through the funding vehicles that never would have got funded on venture capital funding, ever. Totally correct. Whether it's battered women applications, web tra human trafficking, safety apps, stuff that can make money, not, yeah. not be like a zillion, billion dollar business, but really change society and make up. You, you've hit the nail on the head. Um, there are a lot, of, a lot of blockchain companies or you know, ICO companies, th this stuff, the venture guys would never fund it because their model doesn't allow for it. They, yeah. they, they have to, all of these things have to be Facebook, potentially, yeah. or if they just have no tolerance for it. And, and the philanthropy world is not incented on economics, and also, when the project loses its grant or funding, the stack just gets thrown away. Yes. So this allows for sustainability for mission-based investing and developing. So I see societal entrepreneurship categorically going to boom from this wave yeah, across totally the agree. board. The, the world will become a better place. We'll have better companies. Mark, Jeffrey, Guardian, Circle, co-founder and CEO. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage here on the ground in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound. Uh, a lot of great stuff here, a lot of great startups, investors, of course theCUBE. 
2018 we'll be covering all the shows. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.